everybody. Uh, let me see if I can get this to where you get a little more light on the subject. There. Well, today, um, I want to get away from the COPA thing for a while. We all, know, we all of us know how that's going. But I wanted to talk about elitism. Now, there's a lot of that within the community of YouTube, particularly here in the Reborn community. Um, there are people, and I know that some of us uh, can't afford the best of the best of the best of the dolls, you know. But there are some people within the community that think that you have to have uh, dolls by this person or that person, or you have to have specific, you know, uh, kits or whatever. Um, but specifically, they they want the best of the best of the best, and they have their own little group of people that uh, that's who they want to be around, and, and they have their, you know, they all of them have these really high expensive kits and things. And then there's people like me on the bottom of the rung who can't afford the uh, really high-end doll kits who just starting out, and right now I'm only using generic doll kits instead of um, the more expensive custom kits that, you know, uh, when I can afford to do better, I will, but at the moment, I'm just starting out. So, the kit that I made for Kaylee was a uh, doll kit that was uh, a generic beginner's kit, didn't have a COA or anything to go with it, it was just a kit, just a doll kit. Um, couldn't even tell you who the original sculptor of it was. So, but when I can, I am going to be ordering to probably McPherson's or Irresistibles or even Bountiful Baby or Bonnie Brown or somebody else and get one of the more expensive kits. Just can't do it right now. But um, to be a part of an elite group of people, and I think that we as Reborners all are part of that elite group, um, we're going to be putting forth our very best into our work. And uh, as, as we can afford to do so, we're going to want to invest in the more expensive and the, quote, more quality, better uh, kits and supplies and things. And that's just part of being in this community. But uh, we shouldn't look down on somebody whose options are very limited because of their finances, um, because of their financial situation, because the reborn hobby itself is very expensive. Even if you're just working with very inexpensive doll kits, your supplies are expensive. And then once you get the doll made, then you've got to worry about, well, are you going to do a box opening with it? Or are you not? Shipping costs are going to be outrageous. Um, you know, I'm looking at a really huge shipping cost to send Kaylee's doll and its box open, all of all of the lay it that I put in with it, uh, from here to Seattle, Washington area, and um, 
you know, it's, it's going to be a big amount of money because just sending one of my paintings without anything else, a painting in a, uh, one of those mailer envelopes that's padded so that it doesn't get hurt, that's going to cost me $10 approximately just for a painting, one painting. Shipping cost is $10. So now I'm looking at this doll, which weighs about five pounds, plus all of the layout and everything. So it, the, the box itself is going to weigh between five and ten pounds. And it's going to be a lot more than ten dollars just to ship it. Now I've already invested a hundred and fifty some odd dollars in the creation of this doll because I had to get the supplies. And the waiting beads cost me like $37 just for a container of the beads. So I'm looking at all of this and I'm thinking, okay, it's an expensive hobby. And for me, it looks like that's all it's going to be is a hobby. As much as I would like to make it into a uh, business eventually, right now, with my finances, financial situation and all the crap going on with the legalism problems that YouTube is having and everybody else on, on uh, the different social media platforms and everything, with all of this going on, I have no idea if I will ever be able to get the business going. Because getting a business going, number one, it's going to be expensive to do that, even to just starting from ground up like I'm doing right now. Even if I had the money at hand to start up a business, I couldn't do it for less than three or four thousand dollars. Just, you know, just for bare necessities, for, for having the studio and, and um, the business, business space and in my home to uh, have proper equipment. You know, it's more than I can afford at this point in my life. So, okay, um, as I manage to get uh, studio lighting and everything, I'll be able to do much more professional looking videos. I'm going to get a, a backdrop and a studio lighting set and have it set up a little bit better eventually for when I do my Reborn Doll videos. And um, I will eventually get back to posting videos about Robert Stephan and Tink and the other dolls that I bring into my collection. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to probably be a few months because I've, I've got to see whether or not I'm going to have a channel existing. Uh, after YouTube gets through with all of its crap that it's doing with the COPA compliance and everything. So that will happen when it happens. Now, I'm kind of on the outskirts still as a, as a reborner. And so when I run up against the elitists in the reborn community, I'm I'm just like, hey guys, I'm really happy you're succeeding. I'm really happy that you've got all these, you know, all these people that are watching you and that you're, you're making a good, a good life for yourself on YouTube. I'm, I'm happy. I want to be able to support everybody I can as a, you know, with, within the context of being a viewer of these people. And I really still don't have a bad word to say about anybody anyway, so it's kind of hard for me to um, I don't understand the whole mindset, but you know I can understand that they're part they're part of a uh, group that ha is the best of the best. And that's what makes them elite. Um, 
there are other people within the community that tend to badmouth other people. And they have a whole other little clique. Now the problem with that little clique is that they can get themselves in a whole lot of hot water legally if they go too far with their hated speech. Because if they, if they slander somebody, defame their character, and it's caught, they can be sued for a huge amount of money. And that's just by the person that they're defaming. I mean, we've already seen this happen with uh, one of my favorite artists, actually, who uh, had an issue with a uh, company that makes Reborn Dolls kits. And her issue was not the quality of the dolls. It had nothing to do with the dolls. It had to do with um, the religion or the uh, offshoot of the religion that the owners of the company belong to and raised a big stink. Well, I'm not going to name her name and I'm not going to name the company, but we all know who it is and we, we know that she's going through a big lawsuit right now. And so I'm kind of staying neutral on that one, kind of sit back and wait and watch and see what happens. Because I'm not going to stop being her friend and I'm not going to stop supporting that company. They're just, my issues with anybody will have to be on the quality of the work that is produced or in the way they treat their customers. I'm not going to get into uh, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Mormon, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a pagan, whether you're whatever. If you're, a, if you're good to other people, then I'm going to see you as a good person. I'm not going to see all this other stuff. It, it doesn't affect me. What affects me is how you treat me. How you treat me, how you treat the people that are your customers, that is important to me. So, um, when you're on YouTube and you're talking about people, I see that. And when you badmouth them, I see that. And I see what kind of character you have. And for me, that's the dark side of elitism. And we don't need it. If you don't like me, you don't like my videos, there's a real simple cure for it. You don't watch my videos. You don't talk about me. You don't make me a part of your universe. I've had this policy ever since I started posting on YouTube. I will not badmouth other people on YouTube. If somebody is doing that constantly, I will stop watching them. I unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from them. I don't go to their their videos. I don't watch them. I don't watch their, I don't look at their community wall. Nothing. I just that's it. You're not part of my universe anymore. It's real easy to unfriend people on Facebook if they get to be in too big of a pain in the keister. So if somebody doesn't like me, they don't like my opinions, and I'm real opinionated on Facebook, let me tell you. Um, they don't like me. They don't like what I'm posting. All they have to do is unfriend me. I don't care. I don't have that many friends in real life. So uh, if somebody I don't really know real well decides all of a sudden, oh, well, I don't want anything to do with her because she doesn't, she's 
says such and so, or she posted this meme, and I don't like this meme, and it makes her seem like she's a hypocrite, when either the meme was just something funny, or um, it actually happened to be something I was in agreement with, doesn't matter. Um, it was posted to get a conversation going. So, if they unfriend me because of that, well, gee, they must not have been my friend to begin with. And that's kind of where I'm at. If you're my friend, then you're going to be watching, and you're watching my videos, then okay, yeah. And you might offer constructive criticism, and I'm going to look at that, and I'll think about it, and if what you're saying is right, I'll do something to change. If you're, uh, on the other hand, if what you're saying is hate speech, you'll get blocked. I won't go to your videos anymore. I'll unsubscribe. Simple. Um, it, it's, it's just the way things are. So... Um, yeah, it's kind of a brainy, gloomy day again today, so. <laughs> but I'm hoping it dries, it clears off and dries up a little bit so I can finish Patrick's caricature painting that I'm doing. It's coming along very nicely. Um, getting to look more like him every day, but I'll work on it. And when it finishes, then, um... Yeah, I might even actually show you guys what it looks like. So, uh, anyway, my email address is in the description below, norwoodpatricia48 at gmail.com. If you do email me, I will be very happy to respond. I always love to hear from my friends, and if you want to exchange mailing information or whatever, great. Because I want to be able to stay in touch no matter what happens on YouTube. And I love you guys. You make my day just by being here and by being my friends. So... All of my friends and family on YouTube, I hope you're having a really great day today. And I'll talk at you a little bit later.